The entire ethos of the Integral Yoga Center is live to love, love to serve, and we aim to serve every single person that comes in through our doors and even the community out there. Um, and we do this in three different ways. Our aim is to make every person's life as easeful, peaceful, and useful as possible. The light that yoga sheds on life is something special. It is transformative. It does not just change the way we see things, it transforms the person who sees. Yoga is not a religion. It is a science of well-being, a science of the mind, and a science of integrating body, mind, and soul. Yoga is the journey of the self, through the self, to the self. Yoga is not about standing on your head, but learning to stand on your own feet. Follow us as we take an in-depth look at the work carried out by some of our local charities. We meet the people who have inspired, those who continue to inspire, and the many who freely give of their time, help and love in the service of others. You cannot help others without also helping yourself. We kind of work with the energies. When people come to us and they need help, I don't know, they're just sent. And many of the charities we work with, they just come to us. Uh, we meet them or I meet them in, in England or Nepal or I don't know. They just come, I get a phone call, Melanie, can you help this person? They need help. There's an orphanage that needs money. We've never gone out to look to help anyone. All our, all the ethos here has always been people have come to us. And then once we see the people, we see they're authentic, then we see that they really need the help, and then we give it. You know, we, we, we cover all kinds of situations, you know, from a woman who's been left by her husband and has uh, no money to buy food, we'll cover her for a few weeks till she can get on her feet again, to orphanages and schools in different countries, to eye operations in India, um, you know, to special needs, to homeless, wherever we called, we go. First of all, we find out locally who needs help and then we decide what donation can be given, how we can help, whether it's through buying uh, an item that they may need or donating money for them to buy something else. Also, we have certain covenants, which mean that we pay yearly. For example, the leper colonies, we have children that we support in the schooling throughout. And it's, again, so beautiful because they keep in touch and they let us know exactly what's happening. And the beautiful thing that we have learned through this is that we don't just send the money. We go and visit them, we see where the, the help is needed, how we can help. If it's in a building that they need, we take the money and we help to build that building, whether it's a nursery, a school, whatever it is. In Spain, for example, there's also a charity that we support. So it doesn't matter which country, where they're from, when the help is needed and the centre can help, this is what it's all about. And you know, when, when I started teaching in 1996, Gibraltar is not, forget yoga. Yoga has always been a science and it goes through fashion and it changes. But ultimately, the core of yoga is always the same. So the foundation, which we've learned in Hatha Yoga, that is fundamental in any line of yoga. But yoga in 1996 in Gibraltar was very different. Gibraltar is very quiet. Uh, Gibraltar, you'd go to school in the morning, by 12.30 you'd finish school for two hours, so everybody would have to collect their children from school, take them home, everybody had lunch at home, then they went back to school at 10 past two, then they'd finish at four, so everybody was very busy with family lives. And uh, not many people started to do yoga initially. And just over the years, 
yoga's become very well renowned all over the world. Everybody's doing it, it's very much in demand. It keeps evolving, like everything in life evolves. But the people that now come to yoga classes, I don't know them. They're from all over the world. I, I'm amazed. I'm amazed. I would say 20% at the most of my class are Gibraltarian. The rest are from all over the world and all walks of life. Just a little basket. Yes. Anything. Yes. Salutations to serve Nepal. Perfect. Ernie. Yeah, anything. Yeah. It Perfect. is anything. It really so something. can we put that on the, on the poster? Because it's yeah. also raising money for Nepal. For Nepal. Nepal. Yeah. Nepal I came to Gibraltar seven years ago when I got married. I've always had an interest for yoga, but I had never practiced any yoga classes or anything. So I heard there was a yoga center. I came by one day, had a look, had, took their timetable with me. One day I decided, okay, let me try a class, tried it, loved it. Uh, came for, for consultation with Nalini Ji, loved it. She was extremely inspiring. Uh, started coming for the talks and it's just, uh, you kind of get addicted to it because it's just so nice. I actually took the yoga, Raja Yoga course in February and that was a life-changing experience. Truly recommend it to everyone. It was an amazing experience. And now I've joined the committee, um, committee team and it's just amazing. It's, it's so nice to be able to serve in such a nice, inspiring environment where there's no expectations from anyone and you just give all your love and you serve, you know, for, for such a good cause and uh, all the donations that we give, we know they're going to, to the right people. It's just, you, you just do it with so much love. It's, it's truly, truly an incredible experience to come to this place. I don't want to go now, I want to go in six months. That's what I do with the tsunami. Yes, I know. Because everything's too chaotic. Nobody knows where anything is. Things get everywhere when you go immediately. But when you're six months later, hopefully by six months, we'll have maybe even more than three houses. Every year there is an AGM. And therefore, on that day, uh, the yoga center is open to the whole public. Uh, people who want to come in to see what is going on in the center. We talk about all matters. And on that day, uh, all present vote for the chairperson, the vice chair, the secretary, the treasurer and the rest of the committee members and anyone can vote, anyone can join the committee, anyone can step down um, and then from there we have monthly meetings whereby we decide, we allocate um, committee members to take on board different tasks. So for instance we have a team for uh, organizing events, we have a team for maintenance and we have a team for you know the teachers uh, to rotate teachers uh, for the yoga classes. Usefulness. We, we, our aim here is to serve the community as much as, we, as possible. We generate quite a lot of donations uh, through our voluntary classes that we give over here and um, any Every single pound that is not used here to, for the upkeeping of our centre is donated to charity. Recently we donated a thousand pounds to Nepal, we're donating to Africa, to, to Sri Lanka, building, building schools and orphanages, um, to Spain and even, even locally to Guardian Angel. Here recently our flag day was, all the income that was generated through our flag day was donated to Guardian Angel in Gibraltar. And we also, there's, there's no better way to, to feel useful than, than to express gratitude by serving. And that is, that is what we aim to do over here. All our teachers serve voluntary. None of them charge for any of their services. So, so that's, that's the way we give back. And that's the, the real aim of the Yoga Center. At the moment, we're working on a few different projects. One is uh, Sri Lanka. We have uh, sponsored about 15 children here. And one of our students, Chandra, she's taken over the project and she now visits for me and she makes sure, she also goes to the special needs center there for adults, which is, you know, really quite sad. They don't have many people looking after them. The place is really dirty. They don't get fresh food. So she very kindly goes for me once a year and she checks them out. So that's one of our projects, plus the 15, 16 sponsored children we have there in Sri Lanka. And um, then we have Nepal, which we'd worked on in the past. And we, there we, uh, we have a school and it's ready. 
Now, one of my students in Barcelona called Marina, she started up her own charity called Vida Util. So once the school's built, she's sponsoring all the children there. We started with 35 children there, and now there's over 100. So that's another project that has gone. Now I can say flying on its own. And at home here, um, our students, Lakshmi, Paddy, they're now hoping to help in the hospital as well. Uh, Maxine helps with addicts, um, people who need help, you know, as she'd been on drugs before. She's off it with yoga and now she's serving people. We also have a beautiful teacher, Maxine, and she's helping us so much, not just in the center, but outside the center. Maxine, some people may know, has gone through some hardships in the sense of some addictions herself, and she's now helping not only those people to move on with their lives through her own experience, which is basically make the best teachers, but also going to the schools and giving talks. She is amazing and it opens your eyes to so much. The youngsters teach us so much because just because we are the older teachers doesn't mean to say that we know everything. We don't. We learn every day, especially from the youngsters. We just have to be willing to, to accept that they can teach us too. So we could invite a few prominent people in Gibraltar yeah. mm -hmm. who, yeah. who talk on peace, you know, personalities that we know, invite them, you know, even invite the minister mm -hmm. to open mm -hmm. it. We're very excited about this new event that's happening on the 24th of April. It's been a lot of work, a lot of late nights on emails and, uh, and things like that, but it's been worth it because we really, really want to help the special needs children and adults uh, with this disease. Um, basically that's what we want to do, we want to try and make funds and awareness more than anything else. We really want to bring the awareness to the people on the street because I personally didn't really know about this disease before but now thanks to Neliji and her daughter Shani and also Talia, basically my, myself I feel a lot more aware and I feel that this event is going to do that, it's going to bring a lot more awareness to the world. that we're working on in the immediate future this month is uh, mitochondrial disease. Now what is mitochondrial disease? Is a disease that um, has to do with your nervous system. I mean the nerves, the, the energy cells in your body. If the energy cells don't work well, the body doesn't work well. Now I have a granddaughter, a gorgeous little angel from heaven, called Talia, and she has mitochondrial disease. Now, she wasn't supposed to live very long, she wasn't supposed to walk, she wasn't supposed to talk. But I watched my daughter with love, compassion, therapies, yoga, um, physiotherapy, horse therapy, water therapy. My daughter dedicated her entire life. And her goal was, Mom, I don't know how long my daughter's gonna live, but I wanna make sure I do everything to make it comfortable and happy for her. Now, this was such an inspiration for me. And then my daughter, you know, when people work in this love, the universe calls them to work. So she did lots of research all over the world, and she met a few people at conferences. I think the best way to explain mitochondrial disease is to understand that it's the body's inability to generate sufficient energy for the organs to operate. So it's a multi-system disease, the mitochondrial function, affects every organ in the body from the little toe to the nose. Every system of the body that needs energy is affected. Those parts of the body that need the most energy are the most adversely affected. The eyes, the brain, uh, the muscular system. So again, looking at it from a systemic uh, observation, the parts of the body that need the most energy are the ones that are most impacted, but any part of the body that needs energy can be affected with a mitochondrial disease. And they all fell in love with her and they all said, now we need you in Spain. So she's now vice chair of APME for all of Spain to help people with mitochondrial disease. Now they need now 30,000 euros to start a register in Spain. Now to start a register is so important because if you don't know much about a disease, you can't diagnose it. So these people who have mitochondria may not even know they have it. 
So our aim was to get this register started, to bring awareness to the medical profession. So if a child has mitochondrial disease, they are able to diagnose it. Preparations are still underway for the charity dinner to be held in aid of mitochondrial disease. The hard work and careful planning are finally coming together. I'm going to have a look at, see if I can get it set up well, now. Well, tonight we've got a gala dinner, and this is to raise awareness and funds for mitochondrial disease. I'm really, really excited about it, because this is my daughter, Talia, and she's got mitochondrial disease. But apart from her, there are lots and lots of children and adults who suffer from this illness. And unfortunately, it's so unknown. So tonight, we really want people to get to know about it. And we're raising money to try and build a clinical registry. And with that, hopefully bring people together, create a critical mass, and try and work towards clinical trials and eventually finding a cure. So I'm so excited. There's going to be lots going on tonight. There's going to be dance, music. It's going to be great fun, Talia, isn't it? Great fun. The evolution of the studies of these diseases uh, advanced very slowly. I guess that we are in the point in which the uh, diagnosis of the children or the patient, patients in general is very important to reach a uh, diagnosis which uh, will give us an idea of what uh, they have for sure, which organs are uh, implied in the, in the disease. And it's also very important to know the, the, the cause of the disease, the genetic uh, uh, damage, to give uh, advices to the families if they want to have more children. Pick it up. You also make it. Yeah. Just, I okay, think it's so, bits. Be careful. They come up everywhere. I know. <laughs> SIS is a charity and, um, that I started about a few years ago. It actually means service in Satchit Ananda. Service in truth. We should always be truthful. Knowledge. With knowledge. And when you do that, you get bliss. And uh, Satchit Ananda was my spiritual master. And he lived a beautiful life. And... This charity is dedicated to him. Okay. Well, I've been busy um, trying, you know, getting sponsors for the event as well. We've got a really superb sponsor, Yiska Bank, who's a sponsor for the champagne reception outside. So Yiska Bank have been very, very good. They've um, sponsored the champagne reception. They've also taken a table, and they're also supplying some of the raffle prizes as well. Um, also, um, we've got some fabulous um, auction prizes. So the auction prizes are quite amazing. We've got some uh, tickets for the live semi, oh, the VIP tickets in actual fact, for the live semi-final of Britain's Got Talent, which most people will know about because um, it's just started airing um, on ITV. Um, also, we've got a fabulous shirt, which is the um, Ronaldo shirt which is a football shirt signed by Ronaldo and all the team. We've got a print um, by Christian Hook, and we've also got a painting by Gabriela Ong, um, which we are, um, they are, they're going to be here tonight, and um, we're really looking forward to seeing them. arrives and after months of planning all is set. As guests start arriving, Talia's family warmly receive their many friends and supporters. There is an air of excitement and anticipation of what the evening may bring. What is clear is that all are united by this worthwhile cause which has brought so many people together.
Well, first of all, it's a, it's a pleasure for me to be a part of this. Obviously, this is about mitochondria, so we're talking awareness and fundraising. But it is a gala night, it is a, a dinner, so people want to be relaxed. So there's going to be entertainment, we're going to have some dancing, some singing, and a chance as well to raise more funds uh, for mitochondria and the different organisations involved here tonight. So we're going to be having an auction led by a professional auctioneer. A raffle as well with some great prizes uh, to be won, so I encourage people to be a part of that. And then of course we're going to be hearing from one of those uh, leading specialists uh, in the field, people who feel very passionate about the condition. We're going to also be hearing from uh, the organisers of the event, uh, Nalani Chalaram and her daughter too. So going back to Talia and Shani and Andrew and my two grandchildren, they have been, for me, the inspiration for tonight and I am so proud of them. Not only that, through them I met some incredible human beings, people, doctors, physiotherapists who work with dynamism. You know Anna, she never gave up on my granddaughter when she was floppy, she said she's gonna walk. I met Julio Montoya who spent his entire life in biology he didn't marry for that reason. <laughs> I was teasing. <laughs> I teased him. I said, I'm going to find him a nice woman. <laughs> but uh, he served to find a cure. Uh, Chuck, who lost a child, is going all over the world raising awareness. Javier, who lost a child with Fatima, they're here. Shara, who helped Talia talk, talk, and now she talks, you know. Little, but you talk, don't you, Talia? So anyway, and I want to thank you all, all the sponsors, there are too many to mention, just all of you have been so kind and so wonderful to support us. I am amazed by humanity and I'm amazed at all of you. I'm amazed at these people who, who take pain and turn it into giving to others. So I really feel very privileged to know all of you who give your life in service. Om Shanti, peace. Have a wonderful evening. Drink, eat, dance, and be happy. Thank you. Thank you. The evening draws to a close, and as the last guests begin to leave, the ethos of the yoga center rings true. Live to love, love to serve. Well, we've got a very special act up next. Now, we know the focus of tonight is very much about uh, Talia, as we've heard, Nalini's granddaughter. I'm going to welcome onto the stage uh, her sisters, Tara and Natasha. They're going to be singing a song that's called Nothing's Gonna Hurt You. And this is basically their journey, living with mitochondria, what it's like for siblings, and that love that they share, and that passion they have for their sisters. So they're going to be telling us their story, accompanied on piano by a good friend, Juliana. Ladies, all yours. Also, we really want to thank our friend Juliana for playing for us. 